Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. Um, tonight we got a little job. Um, it's kind of one of those weird jobs. I bought a uh, set of drawers uh, off Craigslist for the shop to help organize the workspace a little bit. And the the guy that I bought them from uh, uh, alerted me that uh, one of the drawers was missing um, one of the side rollers here. So anyway, I poked around and uh, it, let's see, can you see that? Yeah, you guys can see that. I poked around on McMaster and on the web and uh, went to the hardware store and no luck. Um, so anyway, we're going to make one. Um, it's a ridiculous project at some level and that uh, uh, we're going to spend an hour or whatever it is to, uh, to make one of these uh, when it's a... Uh, probably a uh, you know two dollar part from the manufacturer although tracking the manufacturer down and placing the order and shipping and da, 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 so you could easily spend that same time um, and effort trying to get one for five bucks or whatever it is um, so I don't know cut your losses I, I don't know what the right term there is it's sometimes you just got to get off the horse and do something and uh, we like to make things, so heck, let's make them, right? Uh, and I'll bring you in closer so you guys can see this, uh, see this roller and what we're doing here. So anyway, that's the project, and uh, um, we'll go through it, and uh, we'll do a little lathe work, and we'll get it installed and get these drawers uh, up and running. Okay. All right. So here's the project right here. This is the little roller. Um, so it's got a couple of weird requirements. It it mounts to the drawer, but it also, this part of the roller goes into a uh, kind of a receiving channel, so it needs to be basically flush on this side, which kind of complicates um, retaining the, the bearing and roller assembly. And what they've done on this one here um, is it's got a chamfer or lead in here and what they've done is they've kind of staked the end of this uh, this shaft here and flared the end so that it retains the bearing so that or the 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 roller assembly so it doesn't come off so we're kind of going to do the same thing here um, although I didn't have a, a bearing like this exactly um, so I'll show you what I did have <coughs> what I did come up with so I got a little bearing here okay this is quarter inch ID uh, and five eighths OD, and you know close enough for uh, what we're doing here. And uh, it's a little shielded bearing and uh, should roll nicely. And it's uh, the other part is it's uh, it's skinny enough to sit in here um, and still have a little sh step shoulder in there. So um, I got a little piece of Delrin here, just white Delrin. Uh, for folks that haven't played with this, this is a really this is a machinist friend. Uh, Delrin is, you know, it's easy to machine, holds size, and it's hard enough and durable enough for lots and lots of projects. And then um, for the for the shaft material, this one uh, I think it's steel. Yeah, it's steel. Um, I'm not going to make it out of steel. I'm, I have a little piece of brass here. We're gonna we're gonna make it out of brass, um, and. Um, it's easy to turn. We're going to cut some threads on there, um, and it's uh, you know it'll make the project uh, uh, easy, easy to machine. So I apologize for my uh, my stilted talking. I'm I'm consciously trying to say uh or um uh, a lot less. Um, a couple people have commented on it, and uh, and it is a fault in my videos. So I'm trying to think about what I say and uh, a little more carefully and not say mm is or um is quite as much so uh, this is uh, my first uh, see there I did it again uh, um, my first test of, uh, of trying to think harder at that so hopefully my machine work doesn't suffer because of uh, me thinking about that so much okay let's get started so here's our um like all jobs uh, in here, I, I, I like to start with a sketch. So here's a little sketch of the of the actual roller uh, and the, uh, the dimensions. And uh, here's our 
little shaft that we're going to make here and then here's our, our roller here. Um, I don't have it dimensioned um, fully, the, the, the roller itself, but I have the dimensions here, what we want. Um, and uh, so anyway, like I said, it's good, a good idea to have a sketch when you start and go up to the machine. That way you're, you're not trying to think while you're at the machine and uh, forgetting something. Um, so here I've done my thinking already and uh, when I go to the machine all I need to think about is machine work. All right, because of the size of the, this particular job, we're gonna get the, uh, the six jaw off of the machine. We're gonna switch over to the, <clears throat> the 5C collet closer. So we'll, uh, we'll put that, we'll put that on. first got this, it didn't have little index marks to tell where uh, the cam lock uh, was released and it, it doesn't have a strong detent that you can feel like a lot of them do. And um, So I had to engrave some little marks in there myself. There we go. I can see them. And this chuck is a pig, it's, uh, it's pretty heavy. Pull a little weight on it, give it a little pop, and then off it goes. Well, it's not particularly hard to change when you have the, the right equipment at hand. And so I just leave that, um, I just leave that hanging on the. Uh, on the crane without adjusting the height or anything just so when I go to put it back it, it goes right back on really easily so clean out my taper this is the Okay, 5C closers on, let's get some collets. Alright. Say so we need, um, I don't know, about an inch sticking out. I don't want to get too close to the collet. Yeah, something like that. That'll work. Alright, let's face off here. Just hand feeding this. Okay, so I'm gonna zero my uh, my travel valve. And then I'm just gonna come up and uh, put a little target mark out there.
Okay, let me get some measuring gear. I forgot to grab it. So that's our should be our first diameter there. Okay, 438. And then the next diameter, oh, 5 16 by 3 eighths. Okay, let's slow the feed rate down. So I already got a threading tool here, lucky me. Let's see what... All right, that looks like a reasonable threading speed to me. So what I'm gonna do is just blue this a little bit. And I'm just gonna come up and zero the tool on it. Okay, like that. Okay. Now I'm going to change the gearbox around. Uh, and that particular thread was uh, 5 16 24. 
So according to my uh, gearbox settings here, that's ACGF. Okay. A C G. Oops. What is it? A C is that G? Yeah. Oh, A C G H. Excuse me. All right. See how that looks there. Okay. A. Six. Okay. All right. Let's do a little scratch pass on that, and then we'll check it with the uh, thread pitch gauge. All right. So we're gonna check the uh, thread with the uh, thread pitch gauge here, and then. Uh, we're just fitting it to a nut. These aren't any uh, fussy threads that, that need uh, the pitch diameter measured or anything like that. So over the years, what I've done is collect uh, all these different nuts, and then these happen to be the fine ones, and I have a set of coarse ones too. So I've just collected them and put them on a wire, and uh, you know that way I don't have to chase a, a nut down of a weird thread. I, I, I have it, so uh, um, anyway, it's just something that's that's paid off uh, for me over the years and uh, I figured I'd share that with you Oop. that one there so that's half inch let me try it on my stud okay so that's yeah you know I could have used this, the nut off of the uh, the stud itself, but I, f I wanted to show the uh, my nut collection. <laughs> anyway, all right. I'm just trying to get this thing to focus on that uh, closely, like that. Okay, so I think we're ready for a little scratch pass here. We'll see what happens. Good to me. I forgot to uh, note my uh, my dial setting. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that's uh, that's fifty thousandths in feed right now, and we're gonna check it. All right, it's just starting, so we need a little bit more.
just taking the uh, the sharp tops off of the thread there so that I can check it. All right, well, that feels pretty good. Well, if you could see it, right? <laughs> Sorry, guys. I think I bumped the camera there. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, there's some threads. Uh, I'm gonna put a little bit better uh, uh, lead in on that. So we're going to part it off now. So we're going to calibrate the tool here on the end. And this is this one thou brass shim stock. And uh, I'm just going to come up until it's just grabbing that. Okay. And come off. And I know that tool is an eighth of an inch wide. It's 125 there. And then um, our overall length is uh, 940 so something like that nine double check that that's zero yeah okay this double sight with that. Yeah, it looks right. Okay, let's lop that off. Back in high range here. Okay. All right, we're going to turn the other side now. feed these just because uh, they're such short this they're short uh, Z distances so uh, um, it's gonna feed them real slow by hand and the first depth is uh, 275. Two hundred seventy-five. Let's get a measurement. <coughs> okay, another three thousandths. Although this isn't a particularly fussy diameter here. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to leave it. All this is is it sits against the uh, inner bearing race in there. So. The next dimension is a little more important because it fits the bearing. And um, this particular diameter just sits against that uh, that inner the the inner race there and bears against that. The next one is a little more fussy, and it's going into uh, one one ninety five.
but 8,000 is left. Two five one two. I don't know how. I don't need a press fit on the bearing or anything, so let's just. Uh, we'll take a spring pass on that. You probably couldn't see that cut. It wasn't much. We were 2512 before, now we're 2506. So six tenths over. And I think I'm just going to give that a quick. little shoulder like there we go two four nine eight five on a little shoulder like that it's hard to file it and keep it straight um, you know longer things are a little easier to file to that last couple of little tenths off so according to the measurements that should go on and it's still a little tight starting nice I don't want to so now here's where you can get into trouble see I'm pulling on that bearing and look what's right behind me there so um, this is one of those situations where gloves might help you out okay so let me put some chamfers on that uh, let's see I don't want to chamfer there but I do in those two spots see if I can get in there nope Forget it. I'm not doing it. I don't want to get a tool and mess around with that. All right, here's our roller material. We're gonna um, make these this rounded roller here out of this Delrin. So first step is gonna be to face it, and then uh, drill a clearance hole through the center.
this stuff was kind of tight in the collet, so um, I'm going to go ahead and measure it. Because I want the OD of the roller to be the same. Uh, or reason. So this is about 3 thousandths oversized, so we'll just take a light skim cut on that. So I'm just going to darken it. It makes the line easier to pick up. skim on that. Try to tie it around a little bit. Yeah, it's not quite cutting all the way around. It's got some high spots on it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use a uh, kind of a weird tool here. Um, it's got a radius on both sides so I can come in and do the radius on one side of the roller and then I can hop over and do the radius on the other side. Um, so here's here's the, uh, the roller. Uh, you can't really see it here. So yeah, there you can see it. So I'll come in on that side and then I'll come in on that side with the same tool. So that's kind of a, uh, I guess I had to do something like that once before. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-neck it on the back side so that the tool can clear. And we're just going to come in there with an eighth inch parting tool. And I know what my, uh, my finish thickness is going to be. So I can just dial that off, 125, and then uh, my wheel thickness is, as I measured it, 268, so 100, 268. Okay, so that's my necking behind it. Um, that's also going to be where I, uh, where I part to. Um, in behind there and neck it a little bit. That. Got to set the height of that tool. Yeah, that's off a little. So what I do with that bar, this spans across here and then allows me to, to measure, have a surface to measure. This bar is one inch and I know what the center height is uh, and it's within the range of a scale. So it's really easy for me to, and I can move this around anywhere I want, no matter where the tool is. So. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this with uh, with blue sharpie that way I can it's hard to see on the white plastic what you're doing so the blue sharpie will help uh, with that process I think I'll change the camera around a little bit too so you guys can see this better all right let's try that spot for the camera
I've left just the tiniest little witness mark in the uh, on the uh, on that that's kind of in the center line. I don't know, is that visible on the uh, camera? I don't know, it's hard to tell on this little screen on the side of the camera. Anyway, that's our uh, that's our radius. So now we're just going to have bore for the bearing and uh, then part that thing off. Okay, so now we're we're set up here with a boring tool. We're going to bore into the uh, um, one side of this uh, recess for the bearing, um, like that. And we have a different kind of a bearing than this one. And it's going to be a press fit in this Delrin piece. So we have a little boring head here. I'm going to come up and, uh, and um, calibrate the tool on this face. Oops. With my... Uh, 1000 shim stock here. So I'll just come up until it just grabs that, like that. All right, so now I know I'm a one thou off of that face. I'm going to zero the uh, travel dial here. Okay, and then we're going to bore in um, 194 thousandths. And uh, I need an initial setting here. That gets me uh, kind of close. Uh, that looks okay. I could probably come out a little more. All right, let's try that. tools drag in there. Oh yeah, I can go up quite a bit more. There we go. So on that first pass, the back side of this was rubbing the hole, so I came out a little bit and uh, gave it a little more clearance. So we're a little over a half inch right now. Let's get a... And I know this is hard to see on the video because it's white. Um, so sorry about that. So yeah, we're 537 right now. And we want... Where's my little bearing? Uh, I believe this is 5 eighths. Yeah, 5 eighths. And we want to press fit on that. Uh, a couple thou press fit in plastic. Okay, so we're 533, 43, 53, 63, 63, 63, 63, 63. Okay, so this should be like 603 here. Six oh six, yeah, pretty close. Okay. Six sixteen. So I want to be careful here boring this. Uh, that way I don't have to make another one and uh, I'll if I miss the dimension, so Okay, now we got to measure carefully here. So I'm going to measure here. So we're 6, 12, 6, 13. Oop. And then uh, for the last bit, we're going to use a, uh, um, this is a Lufkin uh, bore gauge here. And this one has a range of 600 to 700, and I calibrated it a little while ago on a uh, on a ring gauge. So we'll get in there, and uh, these are nice because they go right to the bottom of the hole. And I'm gonna be a little bit careful about how hard I wind up on this thing because it is plastic. 
So let's see, we got six. I don't use these very often, so bear with me in reading it here. 620, oh wait, 15, 617, 617. All right, so we All right, so that's 621, 621 and a half. 621 and a half. Uh, that might be a little stout, but. Uh, you know, I think it's gonna go. Once I part this off, this is a thin, it's a thin segment, right? There's not a lot of material there, so it should easily stretch a couple of mils to, um, to accommodate this bearing. So I'm gonna go back in there and uh, go to the full depth and face across a little bit and then uh, just put a light break on that edge. that edge a little bit. Okay. Oop, a little more. This white plastic, it's really hard to see what you're doing and sometimes you have to darken it even uh, with Sharpie to, so you can kind of keep track of where you are. So that looks pretty good. Let's uh, part this sucker off and uh, see what we get. Well, we're going to go back and uh, since I used my zero uh, or I uh, reset my zero, we'll just go ahead and reestablish that. And then we do the tool offset, eighth of an inch. And then our width is 268, 100, 200, 68, Okay, so there's our roller. There's the one we're copying there. Okay, so let's, uh, I think we're ready to put this thing together. All right, so we're just gonna get it started by hand here, like that, and then we're gonna use these nice flat jaws here. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. So that's pressed in. Oh, darn it. Oh, no, okay. I thought I pressed it in backwards. See, I want that little chamfer there for the stud. Which, we did everything right. Okay. 
So that goes in there like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to flare that um, bit of brass there. So I'll put this back in the collet so I can... Actually, you know what? We could do it right here. We could do it right here. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. Okay. Let me get a, let me get a, little, a little spreader. Okay. Let's go down. Okay. Let's see what we get. I think that's it. Yeah, so it kind of swaged it into that uh, into that groove. That's just what we were looking for. Didn't have to flare it very much to keep it on there. I think we got a roller. Okay, so here's the uh, here's the finished product. There's the stalker. And then there's the Tom version there, so you get a uh, a sense of the thing. Anyway, I even found a found a nut, so I'm gonna put it on the drawer, and uh, we're gonna call this job done. Okay, so that's the drawer unit. We got our new uh, drawer roller in there after, uh, I don't know, an hour or whatever it was to, uh, to make that. Um, anyway, it works. Now I can put some stuff in these drawers and, uh, and uh, fill them up and use them. All right, that's it, guys. Um, that was the drawer ro roller. And I just wanted to uh, say a couple of things. Um, when I was doing the threading, I guess I, I, I botched the uh, turning the camera on, so I missed the single point threading. Sorry about that on the video. I got right to the point where I was uh, uh, dialing in the tool, and then I cut the thread, and I thought the camera was on, but it wasn't, but I don't see the video, so I apologize for that. Um, nothing particularly special there. It was a pretty simple thread. Um, the other thing is I'm... Also, uh, trying to respond to uh, viewer requests to get a little closer to the action. Um, the white Delrin piece is probably not a really good one to get close to. It's just hard to see when you're here in the shop anyway. The, um, so, a couple of things I've done recently is uh, um, Adam, uh, who has a U YouTube channel, Abom79, something like that. I can't remember his last name right now. He's been on the Machinist uh, uh, forum and uh, posting some of his work. He does some real nice stuff. Anyway, he's talked about the mount that he built for his little GoPro camera. So I started thinking about it and I was like, you know what? I'm running into some of the same problems getting in close to the work. So anyway, I made a little mount and uh, it fits my, uh, my little Noga uh, indicator holder. And uh, I made a little special stud that screws into the bottom of the camera. And, uh, and I tried it on a couple of these uh, uh, short videos on this little roller that we did uh, in the mill where we got real close and a couple of, couple of the other ones. So let me know what you think, uh, uh, the close-ups. Um, it makes it a lot easier to get closer to the work. So I'm pretty happy with uh, um, Adam giving me that idea. And, uh, and it seems to work great and it doesn't, um, um, I can, I got a lot more options where I can place a camera, let's just put it that way. I've been shooting off of a tripod, but sometimes trying to get in close uh, with the tripod is, is kind of a pain in the neck and you bump into the tripod or the mill handle hits it or whatever. So anyway, I'm trying to, trying to improve that. So um, another one of the feedback items was uh, uh, how much I say um. And uh, so I've been thinking about that. And let me tell you, that's a hard one. So I'll, I'll be working on that and uh, I'll try to get better on that too. So thanks for watching guys, appreciate it. And uh, keep the feedback coming. It encourages me to do the work and, uh, and video it and post it. So uh, it takes a little bit of work on my part, but uh, you guys are making it worth my while, okay? Thanks a lot, we'll see you later.